Hi there, today we're going to be doing a video about a chlorate cell. So, I made a little chlorate cell, yeah. It's pretty damn efficient if I do say so myself. And I have a nice platinum anode, nice titanium cathode. Uh, my titanium cathode is exactly twice as big as my platinum one. So, following some advice I got on the Science madam Madness Forum, um, I just, uh, it, it says to put two cathodes, one on each side of the anode to use the maximum surface area. So really what I just did is I bent it in half, because it's titanium sheet metal, and I put the platinum anode right in the middle. Uh, it holds really well, so I can't complain about my setup. It's working really, really great, honestly. And, um, yeah, as you can see, I have a decent flow over here. And this is sodium hydroxide solution, by the way, just to neutralize the chlorine gas, because I don't want to gas myself out. No, thank you. And what I have over here is a nice potassium chloride solution. I got the potassium chloride from filtering this salt-free salt. Uh, it has so many impurities of in it. I mean, God. Let's just take a look at the, a beaker from the leftover of the crap that was in here. I don't even know if I could... Yeah, there. Look. So much insoluble gunk, I mean, God. This is like some... I uh, some silicates, I think, like, I'm not even sure. I think there's even some magnesium carbonate in there. And there was sugar also. Sugar, in all, in all things, and in the chlorate cell, you know, that's awful. So I recrystallized it, obviously. So, there's no sugar in this, don't you worry. Uh, it's not a, a hazard. Well, I mean, it is, but... To a manageable extent. So, yeah, this is the the chlorate cell right here, and I I got a bit of yield already. I uh, just extracted after one or two days, running it at like one amp or not even. I was being very generous, barely put any air current in there, and I got this. I tried it out. It burns. I'm pretty glad to say. Uh, I tried it out with some sugar, of course. Uh, the classic rocket candy experiment. And, uh, it burns pretty damn well. So, it proves that my thing is working, which I'm really happy about. And, uh, in case you're wondering, yes, I have a little ice cream uh, container over here. There's some hot water in here. Uh, the reason I have hot water in this is, um, to keep the cell hot, because apparently the hotter it is, the better. Uh, again, Science Madness Forum, what can I say? Uh... I knew why, I just forgot while making the video, so you'll have to excuse me on that. And I have this little heating element from a hot glue gun that I just stick in here uh, to help with the heating. Uh, in case you're wondering, no, it doesn't sort short. There's no... It's insulated. It doesn't uh, shorten the water. Don't worry. Plus, this is directly tap water. There's nothing in there. Unless I spilled some sodium hydroxide solution from here, which might have happened. Um, but yeah, and the reason I have this is mainly because, yes, this cell does get hot, but if I turn it off to do some quick adjustments, I don't want to have to wait for it to heat up again to get prime efficiency. So this hot water really just helps heat from the inside and the outside to get it hot always. So really, that's it for the whole cell. As you can see, I have, like, roughly 4 volts for 4 amps. Which is great. One to one efficiency, am I right? So, I'd say my thing is going pretty well. Now, of course, me saying that this burns is a nice statement, but I think you will prefer to see it with your own eyes. So, let's go burn this with some sugar. Okay, so we're gonna be burning the chlorate now. Uh, we have to be careful though. Uh, this this stuff burns really hot. I mean, I melted some lead that was next to it. Don't ask why there was lead next to it in the first attempt. Whatever, let's just do it, right? Uh, needless to say, don't do this at home. Uh, it's really dumb and dangerous. Okay, so that didn't really burn too well. Oh well, that's really too bad. I think I added a little bit too much sugar. 
Well, that was the attempt. Okay, so we can safely say that our experiment went pretty well, and that we made chlorate ions. Now, why do I make chlorate ions? It's simply because I have a little objective I want to do. Uh, a little series uh, that I want to perform on this channel, and that is making ammonium perchlorate. I saw a video, I saw a guy online ramble about how cool it would be to make NASA great oxidizer from cleaners and salts and electrochemistry. And I thought, that's freaking awesome, and I'm gonna do it. So, this is really just the, the fruit of that, that thought. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing in the series that I'm going to be starting on attempting to make ammonium perchlorate. And for that, in the next video, we're going to need another chlorate salt, and that is sodium chlorate. Sodium chlorate is much more soluble, which will help us in all our reactions, in all our future reactions. But the issue is, it's a lot more soluble, right? So... It's going to be hard to get out of this little cell right here. Because we're going to need to boil it down, and there's hypochlorite in there. Ooh, hypochlorites release chlorine gas on boiling. Scary. So what we're going to be needing to do is get ourselves a little heating mantle, maybe a fume hood, or I'll do it outside, whichever is more convenient. And that'll be in the next video of this series at the very least. I may release another unrelated video for the next one. I was actually thinking of making a little light bulb. So that could be fun. But anyways, I'll see you guys later, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. See ya!